Hello everybody. So uh, we are uh, continuing the topic of energy balance for um, open systems now and we want to, for open systems and closed systems, and now we want to see uh, how we can get the value of enthalpy or where we can get the enthalpy and internal energy value. So uh, just to quickly revise what we said before that the energy balance equation um, is the difference in enthalpy uh, plus the difference in kinetic energy plus the difference in potential energy equals the heat plus shaft work and we know how to calculate the kinetic and potential energy like the last example we solved in the previous video and we um, uh, we know how to uh, measure these we can measure the heat we can measure the uh, shaft work this is something that there are equipment that can uh, or in, uh, instrumentations that can measure these. So the only uh, uh, missing, uh, missing thing is the enthalpy that we have no way to measure or calculate um, by itself. So the enthalpy, we know the enthalpy can be calculated from this relation between the enthalpy and internal energy, which is uh, internal energy plus P multiplied by V. And uh, if we want to calculate enthalpy, then we need to know how to calculate the internal energy. So if we have no way to calculate internal energy, then there is no way to calculate the enthalpy. So this is the uh, the question that we want to answer. Can we calculate this internal energy term or, uh, or it's not possible to calculate it? So the answer is dependent on the definition of the internal energy. If you remember, the internal energy is the energy that is stored in the uh, material or in the system, and this energy is stored in uh, or, or is in form of the uh, collision between molecules or the vibration of molecules or atoms or the uh, vibration of uh, intermolecular uh, 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 components. So these are, we said this from the beginning of, of this course or, this, uh, or these videos, that this is something that we <clears throat> we cannot measure. This is something that we don't have any uh, means to measure or calculate um, by any means. So the, the, the answer to the question is it's not possible to know the absolute value of the internal energy and of course uh, consequently we cannot know the absolute value of enthalpy and this is a big problem because we need to know how to measure or calculate the internal energy. It's part of the equation. And if, if we want to, to find anything else, anything like the heat or the, the work, then we need to find the, 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 a way to get the value of uh, delta H. Yeah, let's, let's focus on delta H now. So um, uh, the, the value of H and U is not possible to measure, but the change in internal energy and the change in enthalpy is measurable. There is some way we can calculate delta H or um, delta U uh, due to the specific change of state, the temperature, pressure, and phase. So this is a very important point. Uh, if we go back to the, equa the equation that we uh, that we uh, we just wrote, this term is delta H. This is delta kinetic. This is delta potential. Um, so we are interested in the change in enthalpy, not the uh, absolute value of enthalpy. So I don't care about the value of H out or H in, I care about the difference between these two terms. So this is what we are going to be focusing on on the next uh, uh, parts of this chapter, uh, because this is a very important concept that we need to understand. So the um, the value or the way we can get the, uh, the, the value of the change of enthalpy is we set a reference state. Uh, and we calculate U and H uh, relative to the enthalpy at this reference state. So, um, and we set the enthalpy of this reference state to be zero uh, so that we can calculate the enthalpy. Of course, the last sentence is not understandable at all and I can, and I can guarantee this to you. So d d don't worry, uh, I'll give you an example that will make this point clear and I'll come back to, to this, this point again. Let's say that there is a man who, or somebody who is uh, traveling uh, for a very, very long distance. And this guy has been traveling for days and he doesn't remember how far he traveled. He, he, he has no clue uh, how much uh, distance he covered uh, since he started his trip. Let's say he started two days ago and he has been driving and driving. He was not tracking how far he is driving. So he doesn't know. He doesn't, there is no way for him to know how far he traveled. Um, he didn't see the, the odometer. So he, he, has, he has, has no way to tell how much uh, distance he traveled. Um, but he remembers that uh, some time ago he passed by a gas station. He put gas. He spent some time there and he knows uh, the time 
uh, th that he was in this um, in this gas station and he knows uh, how far he is from this gas station so uh, after time t1 he traveled this distance l1 um, and after uh, so this is the the point that he he is aware of all what is behind this or be, be beyond this point is is not known there is no information about what has been before going or passing by the gas station so after time t1 uh, so so let's say he traveled distance l that we don't know this is unknown distance and after time t1 he traveled distance l1 he knows this distance he knows that he traveled let's say 100 or, or 10 kilometers uh, after uh, time t1 and he knows that after time t2 he has traveled l2 let's say 20 kilometers and after time t3 he knows he traveled uh, from the gas station so all what i'm the, the distances i'm saying are l1 l2 r3 and l3 are starting from the gas station so this guy is trying to uh, to uh, calculate how much distance he traveled between time t1 and t2 so the difference between the distance uh, that he traveled between time t1 and t2 should be this whole distance minus this whole distance and it's l plus l1 uh, and l2 plus l this is the distance that he traveled at time t1 this is the distance that he tried uh, traveled at time t2 so the difference is l1 plus l min uh, and l2 plus l so if he wants to get the difference he should subtract this minus this okay and the same if he wants to do this between time t2 and t3 so he should uh, get the difference between l3 plus l minus l2 plus l okay uh, but but l is not known we don't know this l we don't know how much this distance it can be 1000 meter kilometers it can be 200 kilometers it can be 500 kilometers we don't know there's no way to tell we know the distance l1 we know the distance l2 we know the distance l3 so what this guy is going to do is i think you all um, have have an idea uh, what he's going to do so what he's going to do is say okay i know that i traveled uh, starting from the gas station at time t1 i traveled 10 kilometers and at time t2 i traveled 20 kilometers with setting this reference point so i said he said this this gas station as distance zero so he traveled 10 kilometers relative to this distance zero and then he traveled at time t2 20 kilometers with reference to the distance zero so uh, the difference between time t1 and t2 is the difference between l2 and l1 so this is uh, what he is going to do and if you write the equation even if you write the equation including l in both cases so it's l2 plus l minus l1 plus l it's going to, to, to be l2 minus l1 so it's the same so the value of l doesn't matter at all if you are interested in this difference between these two two uh two distances then the the distance before the reference state or the reference point doesn't really matter um, if you do this for l1 and l2 for l2 and n3 it's the same so uh, the analogy between this and what we are going to or what we are saying about enthalpy is that uh, l which is the distance corresponds to the enthalpy so uh, and this gas station is the reference state so if i want to get the enthalpy difference between two states this state one and this state two so the difference in this enthalpy and this enthalpy is measured with reference to this point so i would say that i will set a reference state and at this reference state the enthalpy is zero so this enthalpy at this uh, state is is this and the enthalpy at this state is this so the difference between the two enthalpies which is delta h is l2 minus l1 or h2 minus h1 so this is the 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 what we're going to do with the with the enthalpies i'm not interested in the actual distance i don't need to know the value of l1 and l i don't need to know the uh, the absolute value of the enthalpy at state one and state two i just need the difference so i will calculate the enthalpy at uh, at point one or at state one with reference to uh, uh, or relative to a reference state and the enthalpy at state 2 relative to the same reference state and I get the difference so this difference is not dependent on what is be, be, be beyond this this reference state 
So I hope this is this is clear. So if you go back to the previous slide and read this sentence again. So the convenient way of calculating delta H is to set a reference state of temperature and pressure, which corresponds to the gas station, and to calculate U and H relative to those at the reference state. So I would say that the enthalpy at this reference state, at this temperature and pressure, any any temperature and pressure would 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 work. Um, so the enthalpy at this reference state is, is zero. So I would say that the the it's like the distance at the gas stays at the gas uh, station is zero, and. Uh, Based on this, I can calculate the uh, values relative to the enthalpy and the internal energy at reference state, and I can use these values to calculate the difference in enthalpy. So this is simply uh, what we mean by the reference state. So I, I know it's 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 not very easy to grasp uh, by you know, in the first uh, the first glance, but I hope this example makes things uh, clear and uh, and understandable for you. So let's say we have. Um, uh, carbon monoxide that uh, is heated from zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere to hundred Celsius and one, and one atmosphere, uh, and we have delta H one is the H one minus reference enthalpy is two thousand nine hundred and nineteen, and heating the uh, carbon monoxide at the same conditions, which is the reference state, uh, to uh, five hundred degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. The enthalpy difference is. Uh, 1,000 or 1,560 joules per mole. So if I want to uh, calculate the enthalpy, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want to calculate the enthalpy change between state one and state two, which is uh, 100 Celsius and 500 Celsius, then the difference in enthalpy is going to be uh, delta H2 minus delta H1, which is the same as H2 minus H1. H2 is this, uh, H1 is this, H reference is this, this is H reference, this is H2, so H2 minus H1 is H2 hat minus H1 hat, um, which is the, uh, I, I mean delta H2 uh, hat minus delta H1 hat, which is the, uh, the change in enthalpy. So regardless the value of reference enthalpy, the uh, the the delta H is not is not uh, affected, and to make our life easier and to make the calculations more um, convenient for us, we said this reference enthalpy is zero. So delta H one is equal to H one. So this is just to make things easier for us. So uh, now comes the question. So now I can say, okay, so this guy, let's go back to this guy here who was driving his car. So let's say he uh, he passed by two gas stations. So let's say there is a gas station here and another gas station here. And um, he was confused. Shall I consider uh, the, the, the zero line? Is this gas station or the other gas station? So this is um, a question that we will answer, uh, we'll try to answer now. Uh, what if I choose another uh, reference state? Uh, and for the same delta H, I will uh, calculate the enthalpy change once at with re relative to one reference state, and somebody else will do the calculations relative to another reference state. Will delta H be affected? So to answer this question, let's look at these two cases, uh, or the, let's uh, look at these two states. So for the state one and state two, we want to calculate the enthalpy uh, difference between these two states, and we have this dotted line that represents the reference state. Uh, so delta H1 is H1 because the reference is zero. So this is 1000 joules. This is the difference between this enthalpy and the enthalpy at the reference state. And for the second, uh, uh, for the second state, this is the enthalpy uh, uh, two or H2 of state two. Uh, so this is what I get uh, from the, the enthalpy uh, differences is 1,600 minus 1,000. So this is the uh, difference in enthalpy. If I pick another reference state, let's say it's an enthalpy that's higher than the reference this reference state. So the, 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 this enthalpy uh, uh, at state one is going to be 400 joules and for two, it's going to be 1,000 joules. So the difference between these two, uh, with these two enthalpies doesn't doesn't depend at all on where the reference state is so uh, if i set the reference state here if i state it, put it here if i put it at, at 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 further conditions if i put it at state one it's it doesn't matter so if i put it at state one then the enthalpy here is going to be zero because the the enthalpy at reference state is zero and i set the reference state at state one so reference uh, the, the enthalpy at state two at this case would be 600 
uh, because I, I move for, uh, upward for 400 uh, joules here, so I'll move for upward 400 joules here, so the, the remaining here will be the 600. So the take-home message of this is that the, uh, the value of delta H is the same, regardless the reference point. So this is a very, very important thing, that the enthalpy difference is the same regardless the uh, reference point. Uh, you can you can pick any reference state that you would like it it will not affect anything as long as you're doing the calculations right so the reference state is going always always to uh, give the same result uh, no matter where the reference state is for our uh, our um, practices that we will be doing it we prefer to set the reference state at one as one of these two states so I put one of them is zero and I calculate the other only so I can calculate only one uh, one enthalpy not two so just to um, to take this this simple example here, this is a very very simple example to practice the uh, the uh, uh, reference state enthalpy is zero. This is uh, the the data about the methyl chloride. We have liquid vapor and vapor uh, liquid at negative forty. This is the pressure. This is the specific volume. This is the specific enthalpy. This is the temperature um, at zero Fahrenheit, fifty Fahrenheit, and all these things are information that we know. Um, about the uh, the methyl chloride. So we want to know what is the reference state uh, that we use to generate this uh, information and we want to calculate delta H and delta U um, so that we can uh, uh, transfer or, or for the, the uh, methyl chloride to be uh, from zero uh, from 50 I'm sorry to zero Fahrenheit um, to cool it uh, uh, down from 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 0 degrees Fahrenheit, what is the enthalpy difference? So let's take it uh, just one one by one. Uh, it's it's going to be very very simple thing. To to figure out which one is the nth, the the reference state, we look at the enthalpy equals to zero. We say we say that the reference state is the the we, the, the enthalpy at the reference state is zero. So um, this is going to be zero. This is the reference state. The second question is, what is the enthalpy difference uh, for cooling uh, the, the methyl chloride from 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 40 degrees to 0 degrees Fahrenheit? So it's going to be, uh, this is H, this, this is going to be H1, this is H2. So the delta H is H2 minus H1, which is 996.23 minus 202.28. So this is the delta H. If you want to calculate delta U, it's going to be the relation between delta H and delta U is delta U is delta H minus P, delta PV. We know the specific volume, we know the pressure, so it's uh, P2 V2 minus P1 V1. Um, this is what we will do. But the, the there is a trick here because this pressure is in pound force per square inch, and this is uh, uh, foot cube. So this is foot cube and this, this is inch square. So we need to do the unit conversions. To do the unit conversions, it's going to be a little tricky. So we know that the pound force, um, this is uh, 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 this is BTU per pound. So we need to change the, the delta H into uh, from this BTU into pound force uh, and put this P and V in the same units. So the first is BTU to pound force. We have the um, the conversion from BTU to uh, foot uh, multiplied by pound force. This is the BTU and this is uh, foot multiplied by pound force. So this is the conversion. So by doing this, we have BTU uh, canceled out and it's going to be pound force multiplied by foot, which is equivalent to, to Newton multiplied by meter um, because this is, this is the, the, uh, the work. Uh, I mean the, the, the energy. And then uh, this is pound force, uh, this is PSI, so it's pound force per inch square. So I'll multiply it by inch square, divide by inch square. So it's pound force multiply, divide by inch square, so it's now PSI, multiplied by foot, multiplied by inch square. And I want to unify this to be foot cube, so this is foot cube as well. So I will uh, multiply it by foot over 12 inch, all power 2, to convert this uh, inch square into foot square. So I, I have it PSI multiplied by foot cube, which is like Pascal multiplied by meter cube. So now this is the conversion from BTU to PSI multiplied by foot cube. And then this is delta PV, P2, V2 minus P1, V1. I put the values of the numbers. And what I have is in PSI foot cube over pound mass. Uh, so I multiply it by the factor that I got from here to convert it into BTU per pound mass. 
So this is the 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 units that I have for delta H BTU per pound mass, and just I will substitute to get the value of delta. U. So this is uh, the example that we have. Uh, I'll stop here, and we will continue next time. Inshallah, the rest of the concepts that we want to cover. See you then, inshallah. Goodbye.